In this video, we're going to talk about the fundamentals of playing the crash cymbals. The first thing is the storage of the crash cymbals. You want to keep the crash cymbals in a dedicated cymbal cradle like the one here or on a padded trap table so that you can put the cymbals down and pick them up without making any extraneous noise. You, uh, if you can use a padded chair if you're in a pinch, but you don't want to use a bare chair because you don't want to put the cymbals uh, on a surface where they're going to make noise when you pick them up and put them down. Once you have the cymbal, if, you're, if you have a crash cymbals in concert settings, this is not talking about outdoors for marching band, inside for concert settings, if you have uh, pads on your cymbals, take them off um, because they, uh, they mute a little bit of the ring of the cymbal and you want the plates to ring as much as possible. Once you've, once you've taken your pads off, then you should have the cymbal strap and the plate, and that's it. When you grip the cymbal, you are not going to put your hand through and around the strap. This one's too tight. I can, I can barely get my hand around. Um, like that. That's for marching band. That is not how we play cymbals indoors. What you're going to do is you're going to take the strap, and you're going to grip it with your thumb and your forefinger on both sides of the strap. So we have strap like this then thumb goes on the other side and then we grip it up with a fulcrum of the thumb and the forefinger here so that we have it nice and stable All right so now we're holding the two symbols like this we don't have the straps in so that we can put them down and pick them up easily when you make the sound on the symbols the most important thing is set up before you play when you play the symbols you want them to be offset about one inch. Never ever hit the cymbals with the edges uh, square to each other. That will give you a very airy sound like this. And if you do it really hard, trapping that air in there at high pressure and high speed can actually invert the cymbal and then you'll damage and you can damage the cymbal. So when you do the crash, you always do it with the plates offset a little bit. You're going to primarily strike with the plate that's in your dominant hand, and you're primarily going to hold with your non-dominant hand. I'm left-handed, so I'm going to strike with this hand and hold with this hand. So I generally try to keep the cymbals at about a 45-degree angle. You don't want them perfectly flat, and unless you're playing very, very soft passages, um, you don't want them perfectly vertical. I'll talk about that in just a minute. So I hold the plates at a 45-degree angle. I've got my grip set up. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and, and we're, just go, we're just going through the motions here. So this isn't how I would actually do this if I was working on it in a piece. We'll get to that in, in a minute. Um, so I have my offset established there. Um, and I always go offset down. Don't, don't go offset up where the offset's on the bottom. Put the offset up top where you can see it. So the, so the top symbol will go down. An inch. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an AVA motion. I'll do this real slow. What's very important is that when you clash the cymbals together, that you create a flam sound. And I'll show you how to do that here. So we have the setup. I'm going to make a letter A by pulling the top cymbal up from the bottom. Now I'm preparing for the strike. Change directions. And now I'm going to come in at a letter V. And the cymbals are going to strike on the bottom before they strike on top. And then I'm going to make a letter A of A again. So A, V, A, right? And so now I'll speed that motion up just a little bit. So we have A, V, A. And so that's your single crash in super slow motion, right? So I'll, I'll go fairly slow here. And what, you'll, what, what we're trying to create here is a flam sound between the bottom and the top of the cymbals as they strike together so that we activate all of the metal in both plates and create the most sound. All right, so I'll do this real slow. You'll hear a real wide flam, and then I'll start to speed it up just a little bit. All right, so A, V, A. All right, and then we return a little bit quicker. You hear that? Gada, gada, gada. That's okay when you're learning, and then you eventually want to speed it up, or you eventually want to compress it so that it sounds like a normal flam. All right, so here's it, here it is real wide again.
I said, get ah, and the second sound is the one that really creates the sound of the cymbal crash. Okay, now notice, after I crash, I'm returning to where I started. And there's a couple of different approaches for, uh, for symbols for this. Um, in general, the audience hears what they see. And so because of that, um, there are approaches to symbol playing where you may show the audience a, a big symbol flourish. In general, you don't want to do that because what happens here, let's put one of the clips down here. The sound is going to travel, so we, we strike the cymbals together and the, and the cymbal is vibrating, right? You can think of this like a suspended cymbal too. The sound travels linearly in the direction that the plate is vibrating. So if I crash the cymbals together, kadoom, the sound is now traveling at the camera this way along with the plate. If I suddenly change the direction of the cymbals, now the sound is going this way and not towards you, the audience member, right? So we don't, so there's no need to do a big flourish here and point the symbols at the uh, point the symbols forward facing at the audience because the sound doesn't move this direction it moves this direction right you can actually hear this if I do a crash here versus this Right, hopefully there on the video you can hear that, but if you get your own if you get your own cymbals and just do that, do a crash and then move them by your ears and then come back together, you can hear how much the sound changes even where you're standing. After I crash the cymbals, if I have a long crash and I want it to have a little more sustain, then what I might do is I might create a letter V that sends the sound out that uh, sort of amplifies the sound out that direction a little bit. So I may go from here to here. And that can give you a little bit more body in the sound. Some other players will take the bottom symbol and then let the symbols and then let the symbols hang here. That's okay too. You don't have you can't do that for an intricate passage because you don't because you don't have time to move back and forth. But if you just have one really big long cymbal crash, that can be perfectly effective as well. And then you can let the, the plates ring as long as you need to. Um, after you after you play the cymbals, what we're trying to get what we're trying to get is a full full crash. We don't want a thin crash where you get that sort of ha 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 sound. We want nice full body to the crash. Then if you need to stop the sound for either the crash is over or you need to mute, move to some other instrument or, or the part calls for it, then we have to mute the cymbals. Um, when you do that, you want to draw the plates into your belly and your chest as, uh, as hard as you can so that the, st the sound stops as soon as possible. Unless you're trying to feather, right? But what, but what I c constantly see is students strike the cymbal... <laughs> And then they try to mute out here at their shoulders. You don't have to mute, move all the way out here. Once you strike the plates together, bring them right, bring them right into your body. And if you have buttons on your shirt, you have to watch out for that. Or if you have anything, anything else that on your shirt that will make noise, um, you know, be aware of that. But from here, bring them right into your body and mute them. Um, you don't have to do. You don't have to drive them in. You don't have to try to hurt yourself. Um, but you just need the plates to stop vibrating as soon as possible, and you don't have to go way out here to do it. You can do it right here. If you have short uh, staccato eighth notes, then you have to do that all of those motions very quickly, right? So we like if you have a quarter note. And then an eighth note. You want to give that eighth note enough length that it's full, uh, so that it's full volume and full value, but then mute it as fast as you can. So you're not doing this, where you're wor more worried about the mute than the eighth note, right? You want the eighth note to have its full value and then mute. Um, 
Um, another uh, common problem that I see is students that sort of go up and down or left and right and sideways with the plates. You don't have to do any of that. None of that helps the sound at all and in fact makes it impossible to make a good crash because the cymbals are not going at each other. You can't get the fullest sound possible if the plates don't have the maximum contact, right? So if you're doing any of these sorts of motions, then you're gonna get some sort of glancing blow. And you get thin, airy crashes. You want a nice big full crash so the cymbals have to come at each other. Notice on the bottom hand that I'm doing a little bit of motion, but I'm primarily moving the top hand and then the bottom hand comes to augment. I'm not holding it perfectly still, right? So I'm not doing this. But I'm also not coming half and half, right? So it's kind of, I'd say 70-30 or 80-20. Obviously, for your louder notes, your accents, or your fortissimo notes, you're going to want to hit the plates together harder. You can come back from a little bit more distance, but you don't want to swing from back here, right? You don't want to be egregious about it. Um, cymbals do have a maximum volume, and you can overplay them and create bad sounds. You don't want to do that, um, right? But fortissimo with an accent would be sort of the fullest sound that those plates are capable of creating. Um, so you want to tailor your dynamics to that. Um, final thing that I'll talk about here is if you're playing very, very quietly, then it is okay to play the cymbals vertically so that you can actually watch the plates strike each other in your, in your peripheral vision, right? So I'm watching, you know, if I was, if you were the conductor, I'd be watching you. And then I have the plates right close together, still offset a little bit. Then I, can, then I can play very softly and then, and then mute as I need to. Um, I think that's all the techniques we have that will show up in the uh, Allstate Auxiliary Etudes. Um, so that's a little bit about uh, playing crash cymbals. You, of course, can apply these ideas into uh, all of your band and orchestral uh, literature as, uh, as well. Um, and then we'll be back with uh, more accessory videos uh, in the next series.